What's the worst response to, you know why I pulled you over? Story one. I mean, if you're not sure either, I guess I can be going. For the record, this question is used by police because if they do have evidence of an offense and you say no, they can add charges like driving with reckless regard or similar, as if you didn't even notice your dangerous driving. It's really a win-lose. If you say what you did, the officer notes you admit you were speeding and that goes to court and you lose the fight 10 out of 10 times. Better off saying nothing, or you don't know if you plan to fight. Source, I got tickets. Do what I did. Rack up 11 bench warrants for failure to appear, almost get arrested two years later, hire a lawyer, and have all tickets dismissed when the writing officers don't show up to court. It was almost 3,000 in fines and potentially a year in county jail. If I were a cop, I'd show up just out of spite. They almost never show up. Three different trips to court to contest my issues and seven different issuing officers, and not once did anyone ever show up. Some years ago, I got my first, and so far only, ticket in my life. It was a moving violation, and everybody I told about it had two reactions from it. Number one, that's the most ridiculous thing to ticket for, and number two, the officer won't even show to court for it. Sure enough, day of court, and the officer is there. Depends on where you are, I think. That used to be the case in my area, too, if I recall correctly. If court was not during their shift hours, then they wouldn't be paid for it. Now that has changed, and they always show up. Better than what I did. Get 26 warrants, get arrested, spend a couple weeks in, sit out most of them at once, would have had to pay a bond to get a trial date and get out. Sitting saved me like 10 k in fees. Get out get pulled over again, realize they issued the rest of my warrants, do another week, done. Texas stipulates $100 a day towards your tickets. Judge can apparently lower that if you have enough of them. I got $50 a day towards each one concurrently. Biggest tickets, around $1K, determine the length of the stay. The rest were done in a few days. Of course, after I got out, the state hit me with surcharges for some of the new convictions, I still paid like six grand for those over the next few years. Mine happened in 2015-ish. I got lucky and my surcharges were only on the no insurance tickets. I had four of those, but the surcharge program was discontinued in 2019, and even though mine still were paid, they were dismissed. It wasn't reckless driving. I had a crappy car that couldn't pass inspection, which meant I couldn't register the car or get insurance. So all my tickets were for no insurance and expired registration. At the time, I was working $10 an hour, security job, and couldn't afford to fix the car. Story 2. Did you forget? This man and everyone else who reads his comment, including myself, are going to jail if we try that, especially in D.C. In my neck of the woods, you might get lucky and make him laugh and drop the ticket. A while back when I was still drunk, so over a decade ago, my friends and I were staggering to a bar downtown after pre-gaming a bit, and we saw a guy who was pulled over by a cop in a residential area. I was pretty plastered at that point, so I marched up to the cop and demanded that if he was going to ruin this man's night by giving him a ticket, he should at least tell the man a funny joke. The cop put on his best stern face and told us to keep moving. I ignored him and went up to the driver's window and declared, Well, if you aren't going to tell him a joke, I will. What did one strawberry say to the other strawberry? If you weren't so fresh, we wouldn't be in this jam. The guy in the car and the cop burst out laughing, and the cop dropped his flashlight, which rolled under the guy's car. My friend Dave grabbed me by the shirt and dragged me away. I think he was worried we were about to get a public intoxication ticket. What did one tomato say to the other after he tripped in a race? Catch up, catch up! As heard in Fox Force 5, legit happened to me in Delaware like two months ago, Do you know why I stopped you? Because you're a Nickelback fan? And he actually laughed. Depends on the way you say it. Say it with attitude, you're done. Say it while trying to be funny, up to that other person. Disclaimer, results may vary. Possible accidental death dependent on skin color. Story 3. I have a gun, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, now this is really the worst one. Bro wouldn't even finish that statement. I have a gun, bang, and I'm not afraid to use it. God, use what? Idiot, why didn't he let me finish? God, well, he finished your dumb butt. Pulls lever to hell. Robot devil. 
Cigars are evil, you won't miss them. We'll find ways to simulate that smell. What a sorry fella. Rolled up and smoked like a panatella. Here on level one of Robot Hell. Is, is you God? God dang, so it was all true after all. God, you should not have said that. I knew a guy who got pulled over for DUI, and when they had him step out of the car, they asked if he had any weapons on him. His response was, just these guns, and started to lift his arms to flex his biceps. Was immediately tackled, tased, and roughed up. I have a family member that is a federal agent, and as ID, he always pulls out his work ID. I called him on using that to get out of the tickets, and while he acknowledged that was part of it, he also said, I carry a weapon, and it's a heck of a lot better to inform the officer that I'm in law enforcement than to just say, and I've got a gun. Story 4. Well, it depends on how long you were following me. Why don't we just take it from the top? Here it goes. I sped. I followed too closely. I ran a stop sign. I almost hit a Chevy. I sped some more. I failed to yield at a crosswalk. I changed lanes at an intersection. I changed lanes without signaling while running a red light and speeding. Is that all? No, I have unpaid parking tickets. I actually, back in the 90s, said that to a cop. He had to stifle a laugh. I did get off with a warning, but only because he wasn't running his radar, and I got pulled over for suspicion of stealing a car. I mean, I would have had to be pretty desperate to steal the car I had at that point. I had a smashed out back window because it had gotten broken into at a nightclub a few nights before. I was pulled over for speeding on one of my sport bikes in the late 90s on a two-lane road with a 50 limit. First statement the cop made was, By the time I got you, you had slowed down to 25 over. I just said, sure. I had been tucked down on the gas tank, flying, and when I saw him coming towards me, I sat up and yanked the brakes hard. He wrote me up for 12 over, and I was on my way. Story 5. Because you smelled the donuts in my car. Extra points if you say this with a mouthful of donuts and you offer the cop one. I had a friend do that. He got arrested for bribing a cop. Imagine the look on all the cops' faces as you say, Mmm, search me, daddy, right when the rubber gloves go on, and you keep telling them to search deeper, only for them to ultimately find nothing. Then you offer to give them a $20 tip. I'm told that a long time ago, easily over 30 years ago, two of my aunts were coming back from Mexico, and they were asked if they had any weapons or drugs when they were crossing the border. One of my aunts had apparently joked about just the marijuana in the trunk, the person asking the questions did not see the humor, and apparently both of my aunts were cavity searched. Once, coming back from the bars in Canada, I really had to pee, and the line to get over the bridge was like an hour and a half wait. I get out to go pee, and within 15 seconds of being out of the car, I hear on a loudspeaker, Get back in your car! When we finally got to the bridge, we were interrogated for two hours, and they would not let me pee. Finally, they let us go, and we hit the first gas station. Story 6. I'm a sovereign citizen. Your laws don't apply to me. Your badge is gold, which means you're a boat. I cannot be court-martialed twice, that is all. Furthermore, I'm not driving, I'm traveling. I watched an angry judge, defendant had not shown up to the jury trial a couple days before, yell at a guy, You were driving, not traveling, and now you're doing 30 days in contempt. For driving suspended. And, well, because he wasted the time and money of 30 jurors to show up and then pled to the agreement made, allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code, no jail time or license suspension, weeks ago. There was an attorney on the live stream who had shown up early for a civil case. Before the live stream cut, he goes, Well, that was out of the ordinary. Based on the videos I've seen, it's been a long day for the LEO. I'm rarely that sympathetic towards them, but dealing with the sovereign citizen buttholes has to be the worst. And yeah, a long ordeal for those that pull that stuff too. Just saying. Bail bondsmen don't like their crap either because they dodge court and stuff, so a lot of them end up sitting in jail until court. There was a recent case where someone pulled this line. I don't remember exactly what he said next, but it was something along the lines of being armed and prepared to exercise his rights. You can't tell 100% in the video, but it definitely looked like the guy reached for a gun. He got about 20 rounds pumped into him. It was one of the few situations where I think the cop's response, while overkill, was a legitimate use of force. 
Unlike movies, real cops are pumped full of adrenaline in those situations, so they usually just shoot until they're out. May not have been excessive, actually. If I recall correctly, you're supposed to shoot until they drop, since if they're still standing, they may still draw and shoot. Story 7. Got a quota to fill? My mom did that, and surprisingly, got off for speeding. I've never had that kind of luck, though. Your mom got nice boobies? Oh, she does. I concur, she does. I also chose this guy's mom. That one dude's dead wife is going to be jealous and haunt you now. We can be Polly, it's okay, if they both agree. Time to whip the Ouija board out. So, a few weeks ago, I was late to class, and I was speeding, and I ran a red light, and I got pulled over. When he said, do you know why I pulled you over? I just squeezed my boobs together while handing him my information, and was like, I'm so sorry, I'm just late for a test. And he was like, all right, just be more careful. I don't want you getting hurt now. And I was like, okay, I will, and drove away. Story 8. Because I robbed a bank? Really? Yes, the money's in the trunk. Is that all? No, I also have a dead body in the trunk and a gun in my glove box. SWAT. I'm going to need you to step outside the vehicle. Me steps out. The police search the car. SWAT to the police. He appears to have no gun, no stolen money, and no dead body. Story 9. Look, I only screwed her a few times, and she told me you were gay. Why so upset? I thought you had a sense of humor. After all, double take, you married her. This is the third Jim Carrey comment I've seen in this thread. I'm not disappointed. Or, she said you were okay with it, like you were a cuck, or a cock, or a cop. Oh crap, ain't that something? You've got a tiny dong, and you didn't notice I passed you going the speed limit. So your dong couldn't handle being cucked like that? True story, got pulled over in Utah desert going 74 and a 75, Trooper was going 60. Let me off with a warning for not blinking long enough before passing him. Story 10. Pretty much any answer besides no officer is wrong. I don't answer. I just say, may I reach into my purse and glove box to get my license and registration? That's a good one. Also, on the note of serious advice, remove your keys and place them visibly on the dashboard. And place your hands on the top of the steering wheel where they can see them especially if you are a person of color, unfortunately. Announce your intentions for every movement that you make and gain acknowledgement before doing anything. Story 11. Reminds me of a true story of a co-worker years ago, him and his wife trying to have a baby for a long time, fertility drugs, etc. He had to provide a sample to the lab one morning and got pulled over for speeding. Cop. Going a little fast this morning. Why? Co-worker. Officer, I have a pocket full of cum. I gotta get it to the lab. Officer, you better get going then. I have a pocket full of cum and I'm not afraid to use it. Plot twist, the cop pulls out two shot glasses. Story 12. Yeah, so it wouldn't be so windy when we talked. Story 13. It ain't gonna suck itself. Yeah, I had a guy tell me that once and I told him that's one surefire way to make sure it never gets sucked again. Sir, your dong has been registered on the no-suck list. Not so much as a tongue tickle will be permitted. Story 14. Because I let you. Dang Priuses. I shouldn't drink my coffee and read at the same time. Story 15. Because you've been trying to reach me about my car's extended warranty? Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.